Okay, I think this question is even more exciting than the last one. It is so freaking cool just to see how it can come together and the formulisms for how these waves move. Uh, again, dealing with polarization, so we'll just dive in before I get ahead of myself. So our statement is, write down the real electric and magnetic fields for a monochromatic plane wave, which again, very specific uh, type of wave here. Not only is it a plane wave, but it's monochromatic, so it's single color. Um, it's not going to vary with uh, frequency per se. A lot more to be said about that later and the different types of waves. Um, of amplitude, E naught, frequency, omega, and phase angle, zero, that is A, traveling in the negative x direction and polarized in the z direction. B, traveling in the direction from the origin to the point 111 with polarization parallel to the XZ plane in each direction. Sketch the wave and give the explicit Cartesian coordinate components of the K vector and the in hat vector. Oh my, we got a lot to deal with, but I promise you it's gonna look cool, cool, cool once we put it together. All right, so what we need to know is that for a monochromatic plane wave, we just want the real E and B field parts. We have E, R of T, so you go to E naught cosine, where K, instead of it being the wave number, is the wave vector, uh, dot it with the direction, minus omega T plus delta in the normal direction, and then B, which of course has to be perpendicular to E, so we have the same construction, of course, we have that one over C thing, which is a way to keep them congruent, um, that way one doesn't outpace the other, but we have that K cross N is the new direction, which kind of makes sense because if E is traveling in the K direction uh, or with the uh, propagation in the K direction and, or rather, yeah, propagating in the K direction normal to the plane, uh, then K cross Z or K cross N is the right direction to be perpendicular. Okay, so what we have is the propagation and polarization vectors, K, N, N, what we need to notice is, or note is that their um, dot product is zero. Okay, makes sense, they're perpendicular. All right, so for part A, the wave is propagating in the x direction. Hence, the k vector is equal to negative omega over c x hat. Okay, negative x, negative x hat. The wave is polarized in the z direction, so our n hat is equal to z hat. And for some vector r in space, we have k dot r is equal to, well, now take the dot product of the k vector with the r vector, and we see that the only thing that stays standing is the x. So we have negative omega over c times x. And now the cross product, k hat cross n for the b field, well, we see that k is equal to negative x hat. Um, since, again, we want the unit vector, we don't need the omega over c part there. Um, but with that, we get the negative x cross z is equal to y. And so we can construct the E and B fields pretty quickly from that. Thank you for the construction in the book. So once we do that, we see that we have E x of t is equal to E naught cosine omega x over c plus omega t. Um, again, cosine being even function, we could factor out the negative and get rid of it. No big deal there. Um, and B, once we plug everything in, we get E naught over C cosine omega over Cx plus omega T. Again, we can factor out the negative, but now that's in the Y direction. All right, so a couple things to note here. Here's our sketch. Let's note that we are traveling, propagating in the X direction, okay? It is notation that our polarization affects which direction the E field points. So if our polarization is traveling in the z direction, we have to put the E field in the z at, on the z axis, okay? And what this tells us now is that we have E on the z, so B has to go on the y if we're propagating in the x. Again, that mutual orthogonality is make and do right now. A couple other notes about these diagrams. Notice that we have a cosine term, okay? And we know that cosine has its crest at the axis or the origin okay so the amplitude needs to be e naught for the e field and e naught over c for the b field okay 
that has to be the maximum at the origin. So on the x-axis or on the z-axis, we have the maximum e height, and on the y-axis, we have the maximum b height. All these things we learned in trig are coming back, and that you're going to lose points or mistakes your diagram if you do not put the crest on his origins when you're dealing with cosines. Similarly, if you're dealing with sines, you need to have that or the uh, zero point there. Okay, so all these things are moving in the right direction, right? We see we have a maximum at the origin and then it, or at Z and then it goes down throughout its phase. But this is really freaking cool. We have everything we need to know about the light just by the propagation direction in the X and which way it's oriented with the polarization Z. So those are two bits of information that we need. That is awesome. Otherwise, we could torque any of the uh, polarization angles in any other orientation while still propagating through the X. That is just so cool. But, of course, this is a pretty basic example. Let's do one that's in general space. So that's what we have in part B. So for the propagation vector, we are traveling to a point in space from the origin to 111. And if we do that, uh, we just take the separation vector distance, so that's uh, one unit in the x, one unit in the y, one unit in the z. Hence, we have k, the propagation vector, is equal to omega over c, uh, one x hat plus one y hat plus one z hat. So if we want to find the unit vector, so we just take the magnitude of the components, so that's one pl squared plus one squared plus one squared, which is equal to uh, square root of three, divided that by, and that's what we have. Again, the omega c just kind of stays there with the k regardless. Um, just due to construction and units. All right, so anyways, uh, now we are told that the polarization is parallel to the xz plane. So the vector takes the form n equal alpha x plus uh, beta z. Okay, so that has to be parallel. So it's some component alpha and some component beta. Our goal now is to use the dot product to determine what the alpha and betas are. So here, uh, we see that if we take the n hat dotted with k, we see that we get uh, this dot product, but the y hat goes to zero, so ain't no big deal there. And what we see is that we get omega c alpha plus beta, so divide the uh, omega c over to zero. This shows us that we have beta equals negative alpha. Okay, really not that big a deal, because now what we have is... In order to find the n hat direction, we need to take the unit vector. So this tells us that we take the vector divided by its magnitude. And so if n is equal to alpha x hat minus alpha z hat, then the magnitude is alpha squared plus negative alpha squared. And uh, yeah, that simplifies to two alpha squared. So the alpha pulls out and we have alpha, a factor of alpha up top. So the alphas cancel and we don't need to worry about anything. But this does show us that x minus z hat over the square root of 2 is the normal direction for propagation. That is wonderful to see. A uh, pretty clever trick in my opinion. Um, then of course, k dot r, we see that we just get omega over c, x plus y plus z. k cross n, oops, is just a cross product. So we just take the factor of 1 third and 1 half, or 1 over square root of 3, 1 over square root of 2 out, leaving us with a direction of 1 over square root of 6, negative x hat plus 2y minus z hat, and thus uh, what we see here are the b and e fields written, but the graph is really, really cool. Okay, so since we know we're propagating from the origin of 0, or 0, 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, our propagation direction is equal to k but notice that our since we're parallel to the xz plane right our direction polarization for e what we found was um where my x minus z over square root of two so x we're positive in x and we're minus in z so our crest starts behind the x-axis thanks to the minus z and we have to normalize it to negative uh, 1 over root 2. So our um, magnitude at the origin there is equal to uh, uh, E naught over root 2. And for B, it's E naught over C times 1 over root 6. And 
it is just really cool to see how that uh, wave propagates. Just a cool question. That's something you'll see more in a lab too. Fun, fun, fun.